On this channel, I've been talking mostly about online real estate, which is physical real estate that you can buy online. But certainly you can't ignore virtual real estate and metaverse real estate because it's coming, it's coming fast. And there's going to be huge profits made in this area. There were a year ago, there were huge profits made. Then there was a decline. And I think it's going to be coming back. So let's take a look at some of these things that's going on in the virtual space world and real estate and how we can take advantage of that in the future, hopefully. My name is Brian Johnson. I'm a real estate broker. I've been a real estate broker my whole life. This channel is all about online real estate, how you can invest, what platforms to use. Sometimes it's physical real estate that you can buy online. Sometimes it's tokenized real estate. And we're also going to be talking about virtual real estate, and metaverse real estate, more coming into the future for sure. Now, I know the metaverse has sort of a negative word attached to it, sort of like crypto has gotten sort of to be a negative word. Don't believe the negative hype, especially on crypto. I mean, if you look at the news of what's going on right now, the government is not going after crypto. The government is going after the exchanges and the on-ramps to keep you and I from getting into crypto at this moment. Trust me, this is what people are talking about. They're gobbling up in the background. BlackRock is going for crypto big time. They're launching. They're applying to launch their Bitcoin ETF right now. The big players are not ignoring crypto. So the, they're trying to stop us basically from getting into crypto, meaning don't ignore the space. Virtual real estate also was really hypey a year ago. Virtual real estate, metaverse was getting huge. The numbers were starting to get big. The real estate prices in there were extraordinary. I was seeing just resi residential, little individual plots, not even in great locations, going for, you know, $100,000, $200,000. Huge speculation, no real intrinsic value there. It was all hype, but it was emerging and it's coming. Now, one of the reasons I think that the metaverse gets such a, a nasty reputation right now is when people have looked at it, it's very boring. It's very gamified. The avatars, the players in it, or the gamey part of it is old school video games. It's not modern at all. And when it comes to things like a business use case, having a goofy cartoon avatar is just never going to fly. And I'll tell you something else that's never going to fly is getting this VR headset onto a woman's head at work for eight hours a day Trust me, it's not going to work. So the gamified part of the metaverse really limits its use to sort of the kid's world. But that's not what's coming. But even if we just look at the metaverse on the gaming kid side, this year the metaverse gaming world is about, I think I read it was $13 billion. Or Let me check that right now. I have the article up right here. Okay, so the metaverse gaming industry is at $13 billion, I say, or reach it by this year, and growing to $710 billion by 2027. Of course, that's an estimate, but I think it's a pretty right-on estimate for the way gaming is going. If you're my age and you have kids, you know exactly what's going on. There are currently metaverses out there. So when you think of a metaverse, don't think of one metaverse. Like if you've seen the movie Ready Player One, they have the Oasis, which is a, an overarching, it's the one metaverse, it's the big game. And inside of it, you had sub-metaverses and you know, sub-games like that. Don't look for that rolling out in our world like that. I don't think you're going to see one player with one metaverse that everyone operates in. It's just not going to happen. Imagine Facebook, right? They're making this big meta play. The problem is, is it's not cool. It's just never going to be cool. Like, if you launched Facebook right now as a new platform, it wouldn't go anywhere. Hey, everyone, come join my grandpa-level platform that has Karen-level censorship. You can't say everything you want to say, but we guarantee you it's going to be grandpa fun. It's just not going to happen. They have market now so they can impose their goofy rules that makes everyone mad because we have to put up with it. But they launch their metaverse and they say, hey, everyone, come play in our censored metaverse where it's nice and safe and you've got bubbles around your avatars. It's just a corny, corny, non, it's just stupid. It really is. No one's enthusiastic about jumping into that world. I don't think you're going to see something like Facebook meta dominating the metaverse or any one meta. I think you're going to see many, many different ones. On the gaming side, I think it's important to look for interoperability. So can you go your characters, your in-game items, things that you own, taking them from one game to the other, from one virtual space, virtual environment to the next virtual environment. That has a lot of value. If you have kids, you are seeing how much value this is. If you have kids, they're probably into Fortnite, Minecraft, and Roblox. Those are metaverses right now. You can't go from one to the other, but kids and young people live in these games for hours. I remember when I was growing up, so if you can relate to me, when I was growing up, my first computer was an Apple IIe. My first game system literally was Pong. 
Then I have the Atari. I'm plugging the cartridges in there. You and I, if that's your world, you grew up in a different game world. We played a game to win the game. You didn't exist in the game all day long. In fact, the first time I really existed inside a game for a long period of time was, well, I have to go back. It is my Apple IIe, but it was Flight Simulator. You know, you enter your flight simulator. It was really corny back then. And you start your path, you launch, and you're flying around. Hey, I could be grabbing my book and reading or drinking my cherry Coke or whatever I was doing and just sort of play this for hours. But after that, gaming really, really was just play to win, right? Think Donkey Kong. But then games changed. And then you had games for me, and it was harvesting games. Resource games where you're you know, building, acquiring resources, building the town, making the defenses. You all know what I'm talking about. I could spend hours a day in those games and just sort of start to exist in those games. So it started changing, but I was still in that play to win mentality. Kids nowadays, oh God, did I just say that? Kids nowadays, if take my daughter, for example, she's 16. She's a gamer, a little hacker gamer kid. And you know she'll sit in games for hours. She doesn't even actually play a game most of the time. She'll be in her games, creating her avatars and changing their outfits and acquiring things. Fortnite, she just gets in there and buys all the different characters because they remind her of the movies she's seen. You know, in Minecraft, she sort of builds her worlds, but she just builds them and hangs out there. And just she's a creator and she just exists in those spaces. A lot of money goes through my wallet, through her, <laughs> through her avatars into those games, supporting these things. And these aren't, you know, like when I talk about blockchain metaverses with NFTs and transferable items and ownership, hasn't even gotten there yet. It's just getting started. But you're starting to see that. I've heard some rumblings about Fortnite, you know, doing some NFT stuff. You know, everyone's very proprietary, though. They don't really want, you know, you don't want your Fortnite character going into Minecraft. And, you know, sometimes the gamified version of a character doesn't move into another game accurately. So, you know, um, a game I played a huge amount of time a number of years ago was EVE Online. Spaceships, you know, and its resources and economics. Well, you wouldn't bring, no one would want to bring their medieval sword from another space into EVE Online with spaceships and there's a medieval sword flying around. So that doesn't work like that. But other times it could work. Maybe the NFTs, you know, have some AI programming, then they're key, pay attention to AI, some AI programming in the NFTs that change the NFT depending on what environment it's in. So I think there's a huge space for that. And the gaming side of it is massive. But then there's the business side of it. And we haven't gotten into the real estate yet, you guys. But then the business side of virtual spaces and virtual worlds. Five years ago, I had never been on a video call. In fact, in fact, two years ago, I had never been on a video call. Then we had the pandemic, and then people are stuck at home. And now I'm doing you know, Zoom calls for my office meeting. Then I'm doing Zoom calls with clients. Now Zoom calls or virtual calls, visual calls, video calls, I do them weekly. I do them weekly with clients. I do them with people in my office. I have a YouTube mastermind of a few other real estate people on YouTube. Every Friday, we together, get together on a Zoom call for our mastermind. These things have become invaluable in my life. I never would have predicted that. But they have become invaluable in my life and in my business. But again, these aren't quite metaverses yet, but I'm starting to exist in virtual spaces. Then what comes out is look at this right here. You guys have probably heard the hype on this right here, but let's just take a look. And it's the Apple Vision Pro. So the Apple Vision Pro brings in virtual reality and augmented reality. Let's not go into exactly what the Pro is, but virtual reality still causes the same problems as some games do for 30% of the population. You can't play it because it makes you carsick. Augmented reality is when you're seeing your physical space. So you put on the device and you can see your physical live space in front of you, but then you can lay images over it. So you can have an operating system Maybe you're clicking buttons, but you're still seeing your live actual world on the other side of that screen. That's going to be augmented reality. The new Apple Vision Pro is mixing virtual reality, augmented reality into this mixed reality. The headsets are much lighter. Again, the one I just showed you, you're not going to get that on to someone's head eight hours a day in an office. And same with this Vision Pro. You're not going to get this on some secretary's head for eight hours a day. Messing up her hair. If, if you think that you don't know what it's like to work in an office full of women, go join any real estate office and you'll learn pretty quickly. No one's putting this on for eight hours a day. But when I showed it to my daughter, she practically lost it and how cool this thing was. And it's a $3,500 price tag. So let's just hold off on that. But I saw the immense value of it because the other thing it does, like I said, that 30% of the people that get car sick, I can put this on. I can put this on and do augmented reality. Now, does this work in a business environment? 
because once you do that, bringing it into the business environment is going to change the game because then now you've got virtual spaces. Don't think metaverse term, think virtual spaces. Would you put this on in a virtual space? Well, you might not put the Apple Vision Pro on, but have you seen the HoloLens by Microsoft? So, the, so that's this bad boy right here. This is a work environment. This is not a metaverse gaming tool at all. This is the Microsoft HoloLens. But look at this right here. In a work environment, would people be putting this on? Well, I mean, Amazon workers have been scooting around on a Segway for years. That's fine. I think we just showed after the last three years, you can get people to put on a face diaper all day long if you ask them to. So would someone put this on in industrial spaces? Absolutely, they would. Look at this right here. So, you know, they have three different ones, but you can talk one here for healthcare, one here for looks like general business use, one here for industrial use, $3,500 to $5,000. This one right here is built into a hard hat. Okay, so it's coming, right? That augmented reality in virtual spaces. Someone with this on could, for example, I was talking to my brother about this just the other day. He has a company where they do roof estimates. Why couldn't someone put this on, stand on top of a roof, look at the roof, scan it with the with this imager basically with this thing on this hololens on have the ai look at the roof and scan it against the last 10 million roofs it's ever looked at notice the defects what's the cost of repairs order the parts set up a timeline for everything and just have that done with some dude standing on the roof with this thing on his head yeah absolutely you can get someone to do that so you guys this space is huge and then real estate that's coming there's going to be massive investment opportunities in the metaverse in the gaming metaverse and in other spaces of virtual reality spaces and that's why i wanted to bring that up with you guys i hope you guys are okay with talking about metaverse and virtual real estate coming up in the future because i'm highly interested in it now it can be a very it is a very speculative gambling environment this is not normal investing or anything like that this is a highly speculative, like I said, this is straight up a gambling environment. Last summer, I was seeing, I was watching Decentraland and the Sandbox pricing. And I was seeing properties up there, like I said, six figures, sometimes higher six figures for clusters of properties selling. It was absolutely crazy. Let's look at the, what the prices are doing right now. So right here, these are some recent sales on open sea of land in Decentraland. And if you look tightly right here at the prices, I'm seeing the top one, $817. $800, $800. Now it's priced in mana and mana, the, the tokens of mana and sand, which run these two metaverses are actually being uh, kind of maligned by the SEC right now as being unregistered securities, along with another a huge amount of other things that they're you know sort of aiming this at. So that might be taking a little of the, you know, the inflation out of these pricing, maybe it has people a little bit scared, but look at this, you guys, like I said, $800, $1,000. Occasionally you'll see an outliner. Look at this DG estate one. Let me bring this up. So an estate in Decentraland is going to be multiple parcels grouped into one parcel. And this one, it says it just sold for 54,000 mana, which is about $20,000. All the others are selling for around a thousand. When I see something like this, the first thing I think is just, just money laundering. That's just straight up money laundering. Um, and that's how I would view this right here. What's going, it's going for $20,000 when everything else around this going for a thousand. Yeah, I mean, if you owe me $20,000 and we don't want anyone, we want to legitimize you handing me $20,000. That's what I would do. I'd go buy a piece of land for a thousand dollars, put it back up on here for 20. Just pay me my $20,000 for this land and they paid off your debt. So I really suspect that a lot of these high prices when I see them going through right now are somewhat more along the scheme of not legitimate transactions. So let's look at the sandbox also. You guys, sandbox pricing, I'm seeing under $600. Now on Decentraland back here, it didn't give me the graph and I don't know why it's not giving me this graph here because this is really, really, really what I wanted to see. But if I pull it up on the sandbox, this is the graph of the sandbox is January of 20 right here at its height right here i don't know if you can see this the average price was 4.3 eth and this was back in january of january 22 that's what i want to say is january january of 2022 in january of 2022 eth was about 2900 dollars to three thousand dollars if i remember right so you're seeing properties back then on average were going for twelve to thirteen thousand dollars Whereas right now you're seeing the average is going on down here at the average of half an ETH, which is either in six or seven hundred dollars, seven hundred and fifty, eight hundred dollars right now for half an ETH. That's the average price. If we see any action coming up in these metaverses in the future, you guys, when the 
number one, the SEC resolves this case and they take the heat off of mana and sand and all the other tokens that are you know, labeling as this problem. We're going to get beyond that. I think at that point, if you can pick up a piece of land for 500 bucks in the sandbox and you start, well, before you see that, you want to see the usage start ticking up. So you want to be watching this stuff almost, I mean, if you're interested in it, I'd be checking in on the stats once a week to look up. There's sites you can find out there that will look up the usage stats on how many people are visiting these. But I'd be paying attention to the noise on these platforms because, like I said, you're seeing properties under $1,000 that were going for $150,000 in some cases just a year ago. Um, also, though, you want to pay attention to Microsoft because their HoloLens is a big deal. But AI is going to be playing a big part in the metaverse universe is coming up. And Microsoft is really, you know, they grab ChatGPT. They're the major investor in there. They're building ChatGPT, basically AI, into Windows coming up. I'm seeing um, AI assist tools popping up in a lot of the software I'm using. Even if I didn't install it, ask for it too, I'm seeing AI assist popping up. So when you see AI verge, you know, kind of merging in with the metaverse world, that's going to, that's really, it's going to expand it in, 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 in infinitely is the word I'm trying to get out here. Um, because you can put AI into NFTs, you can put AI into the programming of, you know, metaverses, um, of spawning new games or new worlds on the gamey side of it. On the business side of it, look for Apple and Microsoft, which have basically the business environment taken. Like I said, Microsoft with their HoloLens, you know, that's a big play into the space, but we're already using Microsoft Teams. They're going to be bringing AI and sort of virtual world elements into Microsoft Teams or whatever they're going to be calling it here in the future. So I think it's pretty obvious, you guys, that this is a really important play if you're interested in investing in other real estate alternatives. You know, that's what we're looking at on this channel. We're not talking about going down the street and buying the duplex. We're talking about finding it online, buying it outright online, for example, on Proppy. Or if you're going to buy it on tokenized real estate investments, that's going to be the pro other p platforms I've talked about on here, like, you know, Landa and, well, Ground Floor is a little different, but the other alternative real estate investing platforms I've talked about. So you can't ignore then also looking at virtual real estate, um, especially when you can see those prices down there in the sub thousand dollars on highly speculative, but could be high reward, high return investments. If you guys like this content, let me know. Let me know if you want me to keep talking about virtual real estate. If you have any insights into it, put it in the comments below. I want to hear what you guys have to say about virtual real estate because we have to watch these platforms and see what's emerging and where the hype is starting to build. And if we can get there early and see where that hype's starting to build and you can get in, there's going to be some really, really big profits to be made in this space.